today we're going to be talking about arithmetic sequences. And what you need to understand is what a sequence is. A sequence is a function in which the domain consists of natural numbers and the range consists of real numbers. Meaning, okay, our domain is basically the term number. Our range is the value of the term number. So a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, that's going to be the value of the term. The subscript here tells us the term number or the number in our domain. Okay, a finite sequence has an end to it versus an infinite sequence goes on forever. Okay, and just some key things that you guys need to know. So when we're talking about a sequence, and this is something that I'm adding in new for when I'm re-recording this lesson, a lot of students don't understand what this means. Okay, that three is the n, and it tells me the term number. Okay, so we're talking about term number three here. So we're talking about term number three, 78 is the value, is 78. So that's the actual output or the range, the value of our term. Now there's a specific type of series, arithmetic sequences and series. Sequences is the list of numbers. Okay, that's a list. We're going to spend one day on that. And then series is when we add up all of the numbers in a sequence. And in this case, the difference between the consecutive terms and co is constant for an arithmetic sequence. Meaning, how do I get from 3 to 1? 1 minus a negative 3 is 4. I add 4 to get to the next term. Does that hold true for all of our other terms? That is true. One of the things that we're going to be doing in this section is we are going to be writing an equation or a rule. Okay, so a rule is the same thing as an equation for this sequence. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's look at this. Our first term, first term, that's what that sub 1 means, is negative 3. To get to my second term, we took our initial term, our first term, and we added 4 to it. To get to our third term, our third term was 5. We took our initial term, negative 3, and we added 4 once, twice. So we added 4 two times. Our fourth term, which is 9, we took the 9... I'm sorry, we didn't take 9. Marnell, get with the program. We took the negative 3, and we added 4 to it 1, 2, 3 times. To get to the fifth term, which was 13, we took our initial term, and we added to it 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Something that I want you guys to notice. How does the term number, or our n, compare with that number that we're adding the common difference to? Okay, that 4 is standing for our common difference. This is standing for our first term. That number is 1 less than our term number. So that number is 1 less than our term number. So our rule, okay, so our rule, this is how we're going to write an equation for any arithmetic sequence. You need to memorize this formula. So don't ask me in class. I know you guys are going to ask me in class. Don't ask me in class. We need to memorize the formulas. And I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, rewatch the video, dude. Okay? I'm telling you guys this stuff. I sure hope we're paying attention. So again, you have your nth term. Okay, remember where n is our term number. a sub 1 is the value of the first term. Okay, n is the, the term number, what term number we're talking about, and d is our common difference. So let's do some examples. So in our first example, we're writing a rule, 
which is a fancy way of saying equation for the nth term of our arithmetic sequence. Okay, so we're going to be using the formula I just gave you. And we're going to be plugging in and simplifying that formula and then finding a sub 41. Okay, so let's look at the sequence. How am I getting to the next term? Here, I'm adding 8. And then just make sure you stay consistent. You're consistently adding the same number for each term so that you realize that, yes, it's arithmetic, and that my common difference is 8. And it might help you guys if you lay out, hey, D is 8. Our first term is equal to 6. So that you can just then easily plug into your formula. I'm looking for a formula for the nth term. That's going to be one of my variables. A sub 1, we just said, was 6. Plus our common difference, we just said, was 8 times n minus 1. Now it's just a matter of simplifying. So this is our first part, the formula for the nth term of our arithmetic sequence. Now I need to find a sub 41. That tells me I'm looking for the value of the 41st term. So I'm looking for when n equals 41. Because look at what changed. The a stayed the same. The n became a 41. So substitute in 41 for n and a sub 41 is equal to 326. Write a rule for the nth term of our arithmetic sequence. Okay, I give us d, and I give us two things in this a sub 14 equals 46. That 14 is telling us our n. That 46 is telling us the value of the nth term. What was that nth term? Our 14th term. Okay, so filling into the formula. And I, rec I recommend that you guys write down this formula a lot to help you memorize it, because we're going to have a few formulas in this chapter. Okay, value of the a sub n. The value of the 46th term, I'm sorry, of our 14th term is 46. We don't know a sub 1. They gave us our common difference was 4. Now we plug in n. n was 14 minus 1. So solving for that, we get a sub 1 to equal negative 6. So now again, a sub n is equal to a1 plus d times n minus 1. Okay, so now plugging into this, we have our first term we found was negative 6. We know our common difference was 4 times n minus 1. Simplifying that equation out, we get this. Okay, arithmetic means, okay, in this sequence. So think about it like this. We need to basically fill in this sequence. And I'm telling you that it's an arithmetic series. Okay, so if you think about it like this, I add my common difference once twice, three times, four, five. So we add 22 is equal to our initial term, negative eight, plus our common difference, one, two, three, four, five times. Okay, so basically you could think of this as a sub one, and then we have two, three, four, five, 
six, this is our sixth term. If you filled into that formula I give you, you would get this technically because you'd have n minus one here, which would be five. Solving that for d. When I solve that for d, I get six. Okay, so now I know my common difference is six, so now it's just a matter of filling in. I don't have a lot of room up there, so I'm going to lay it out here. Okay, so I add six. That's going to be a negative two. I add six, I get four. Add six, I get ten. Add six again, I get sixteen. Make sure when you add six again, you get twenty-two. In this example, we are writing a rule, again remember rule means equation, for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence where the seventh term is 34 and the 18th term is 122. So that means that a sub 7, because seventh, remember, means n, is equal to 34, and the 18th term is equal to 122. And again, we're going to be using the same formula because I'm writing a rule. I'm writing an equation. So fill in what you know. Remember, a sub n stands for the value of that term. The value of that term is 34. a sub 1 we don't know. N is 7, because that's our term number. Here. Okay. Our value of our 122nd term, or I'm sorry, our value of our 18th term is 122. We don't know our first term. We don't know the common difference, and now we're, we know that n is 18 because that's our term number. So now we have two equations, and really we have two unknowns because we have d and we have a sub 1. So solve this system of equations simultaneously. I think it's easiest if we multiply one of the equations by negative 1, because that would make your a sub 1 term negative, and when we add them, it's just going to cancel. So I'm going to leave the blue one alone, and the red one I'm going to multiply by a negative 1. And now I'm going to combine those, and we end up getting 88 is equal to the a sub 1 terms cancel, 11d, so d ends up equaling 8. That's going to be super helpful to us. Okay, I know d is 8. I need to find a sub 1. If I plug into either one of these two equations, I can substitute in 8 and get a sub 1. So solving for a sub 1, we get negative 14. Now it's just a matter of plugging into your a sub n formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which we just found to be negative 14, plus the common difference is 8 times by n minus 1. Again, now it's just a matter of simplifying. And we simplified, and we have our rule or our equation for our nth term. Okay, there are your two lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time.